Hello and welcome to Sins of a Solar Empire 2. I'm Shadow Coast and welcome to the channel. In this video we are talking Advent and the top most critical research in Tier 1 and Tier 2 playing as this faction. Now those familiar with TEC will view this as civilian and military research. Playing as the Advent faction, they call it Harmony Research, which is all about the economy and your unique ability of unity, and Hostility Research, which is effectively your combat elements of the game. Without further ado, let's get into Harmony Research. Now, there are two views here. We have our kind of long view on what builds off what. I'm going to take this short view here just because it's a little bit easier to see. I do have a loose order down here on how I might prioritize research, but this will be dependent on your playthrough, so you might shift things around, which I'll explain. To start with, playing as Advent, I do tend to recommend prioritizing upgrading your surface mining. So that's this thing down here. And the reason we're going to do this is because we're going to want to make sure we hold orbital structure slots for key structures that play off our Unity ability. Uh, such as that of the Temple of Unity, which will unlock along with research stations to upgrade research along the way. So in this build, I do recommend initially starting off focusing on selective harvesting and then upgrading that to crystal enrichment, which will give you a plus 25% surface mining rate for crystal. A lot of you will find that you fi have a crystal deficit, which you can see I do here, in just letting things run to produce this video. So make sure you grab this fairly quickly. I also recommend grabbing rich or scrying fairly early game to get that plus 10% metal uh, production on the surface. Now we're going to augment the surface mining one but that'll take us into tier 2 so we might have to wait a little bit for telekinetic extraction. After you get these three initially I then recommend doing one of two things. If you're having issues with your credit income, I do recommend thinking about unlocking the Haven Dome Unlock. This will augment credit income for asteroids. Um, so keep that, on, keep that in mind and you're going to want to build those on your kind of asteroid planets here to help with your credit income. Now as you unlock and expand, make sure you're upgrading your commerce and your mining, trying to max that out fairly quickly. Now for those who want to take slots, you can pick up orbital extraction in tier 2, but I don't recommend that because those orbital slots are going to be much better used for building other items like research posts uh, and Temple of Unity unlock posts and eventually exotic refineries. We'll get to that in a minute. Now looking at tier 1, there are a few other things you're going to want to do. Depending on your playthrough, you're going to want to unlock the ability to colonize planets. So depending on what's surrounding you, you're going to prioritize this. So for example here, it looks like I have two volcanic uh, planets that are kind of in my zone of what I want to control. So I'm going to probably uh, prioritize unlocking volcanic embrace over say ice colonization um, and primordial but you're going to want all of them eventually to help your expansion. One critical element playing as the advent is you're going to have structures like the Temple of Pilgrimage, which will automatically colonize nearby planets and asteroids that, don't, uh, that have been cleared of all enemy presence. So it is important that you kind of unlock all these so you'll naturally expand as you focus on your military. So that's uh, some of these buildings. Now up here you're going to see that I did recommend getting Temple of Pil Pilgrimage. You're going to want to unlock this uh, fairly early game and place these strategically to help you with that colonization effort and control of culture. That's critical to the advent. A few other things to note down here um, uh, are uh, up here in tier 1 is I do recommend uh, unlocking Unity Awakened Temple of Communion, you're going to place these structures uh, to help with your influence and of course Empathic Projection. This will unlock the ability to deal with minor factions here which you're going to want to do assuming you have minor factions uh, on the map you're playing with. Let's get into Tier 2. So in Tier 2 again I would recommend prioritizing some of the items down here at the bottom to bolster your economy. Uh, so for example, Silent Monastery Unlock. If you're finding yourself at a deficit 
of um, you know metal, then I do recommend unlocking this and placing this on several planets. Here, um, also surface mining metal rate. We talked about this. I get this pretty early just to naturally get it. And then you can also unlock laminate forge unlock, um, which uh, which will basically allow you to augment um, metal. Uh, so you're basically going to convert crystal to metal, assuming that you have a uh, uh, surplus of crystal. So keep that in mind here. Um, also of note, I do recommend unlocking the exotic refinery fairly early. Now, you do have some choices here because over here, uh, there was an option, and I am losing it now, where you can reduce the cost of surveying, so div divination. I do recommend picking up divination and then down here on your planets uh, using this to get exotics fairly early, but if you're doing this at a quick pace, you're going to want to prioritize exotic refineries and placing those. Once you put exotic refineries, you can then order different exotics as needed for their requisite cost. So keep that in mind. You're going to want to pick that up. Um, and then, of course, we're going to want to continue to uh, grab telekinetic separation here. Not surprisingly, we're doing that surface mining enhancement for crystal and metal, which is critical. Now, as we kind of go up here, I do recommend distant visualization, which is uh, in general helpful for phase jumps and ability. Um, you know, here we are going to want to unlock our unique faction mechanic via Temple of Unity unlock. I tend to try to prioritize this a little bit earlier. It's really dependent on if I need to focus on my economy down here or not. If I have a good start and I'm feeling good, I'm going to prioritize this first. If I'm at a deficit, uh, for materials, then I'm going to come down here and prioritize these first. Once you unlock and start building Temple of Unities, you unlock the unique faction mechanic. So as you build these Temple of Unities, you can purchase uh, the different abilities and their different levels of the abilities, which you can see here. We'll do another video on that. One of the things that's important to note is that we are going to want to also update focus, which is what we use to execute the abilities down here. So that it has its own restoration rate and cap number that we're going to want to build upon. So when we unlock Temple of Unity, we'll kind of inherently unlock Unity as we build these structures, which I do recommend you prioritize. Um, and then from there, we are going to want to grab things uh, like, where's the focus rates? Increase in um, focus. So here, for example, accumulated will will give us plus 50 focus, bringing this to 100 as soon as we start building it. One item to note, once we unlock these structures, similar to the trade ports in the TEC, you have limited slots. So in my home world here, I have, I believe, five slots for Temple of Unity, which will give me five Unity to spend over here. So you're going to want to make sure you build Temple of Unity to unlock the abilities you're going to want to use. I personally like Recall, but we'll have a separate video on that. Um, so other things to note, right? We're going to want to continue to upgrade things like Zealous Worship for a culture rate. Uh, I definitively like Empathic Alignment. This is really the minor faction interplay. I tend to use them a lot. I buy the abilities that they have. I deploy them uh, to great effect. So if you like minor factions, don't forget Empathic uh, Alignment. And then there are two other abilities I want to call out here. Uh, that I think are really, really important. Forewarning and false belief monitoring. Forewarning, uh, this will allow us to see incoming enemy ships during their phase jump to planets we've established a dominant culture on. This is hypercritical because it allows you to see where the enemy is coming, anticipate their movement, and then get there to defend your planets or run away if you think they're going to overwhelm you. Also, uh, false belief monitoring. Scryers learn to become attuned to their sentiments of distant people on your empire to absorb the spread of hostile culture anywhere in the galaxy. So we can see how the how and where the enemy is expanding. This is a critical trait in my opinion because it allows you to understand how the map is developing and plan accordingly. Cutting off enemies from growing too large too fast. So keep that in mind. Um, and then we have 
Uh, other items like Unity Ascendant, where we're just increasing our Unity. This will kind of help us unlock and level up these abilities a little bit quicker. So keep that in mind. So that is the Harmony or Civilian Research, depending on how you want to view it, that I recommend. These other ones are still helpful and important. They'll unlock structures that will help augment your economy. I haven't tended to have a lot of issues with commerce, but if you do, highly recommend grabbing things like the Sanctum Unlock. Um, and then, you know, the Sanctuary Spires Unlock, which increases your commerce credit income rate. A generation so if you are having issues with that keep those those builds in mind and then these planetary enhancements for the different planetary types for colonizing you're going to want to pick up um you know call it mid to later game to make sure you're kind of building out these planets to their fullest extent let's take a look at hostility research or military research now in this I think there is more of a defined order this depends on your build I personally like the Tempest Unlock build, augmenting our Tempest and their associated missiles. These will melt enemy ships so fast, and I think it's really overpowered. We'll do some other videos on that maybe if you like it. Let me know in the comments. Now to start with, I always, always recommend upgrading your supply as soon as possible. So for both Tier 1 and Tier 2, as soon as you're unlocking these tiers, the first ones I highly recommend is augmenting or increasing your max supply. This determines how many ships you can have produced, warships you can have produced to fight on your behalf. So subliminal manipulation, and then when we when it becomes available, immediately grab telepathic signaling and compelled co uh, contribution. This allows you to build more ships in your fleets, have larger fleets, and dominate the map. Now from there, I personally recommend unlocking first the Tempest. This is, in my opinion, one of the all-time best ships. It just causes so much damage. You can stack them. You'll see I'll have fleets of 30 or 40 of these ships, and they come in, and they will melt the enemy, especially early game. They seem like a cheat code. So once you get Tempest unlock, I do highly recommend following that up with refined warheads. We're basically augmenting their weapons. Now you can see here in the bottom, improves um, the different ships that have these types of weapons, the Tempest Velt Vessel, I highly recommend. After you pick that up, I do recommend thinking about focusing on shield generation, shield points. So I recommend basic shield projection, inspired reactors, uh, which will increase your antimatter and antimatter regeneration. And I would also definitively pick up hangar defense unlock and start placing these to help defend your territory's early game. A few other things to note, you're going to want to grab Novice Psi Training for your Psi Power, upgrading that, which will be helpful, um, and then eventually you're going to want your Acolyte. Now the Acolyte is the uh, kind of Corvette level, I believe, <clears throat> um, smaller kind of fighter ship, uh, and it's a fast attack ship, um, but it also has the ability... Um, to, I believe, transfer antimatter uh, to help you deploy and use other abilities that require antimatter. So I do recommend unlocking it. I can sometimes even wait till after uh, tier 2 for this before you build it out because I'm just spamming tempests that, again, melt everything in its path. Now when it comes to other damage types, I probably deprioritize improved containment and refined laser cannons. If you look at the build I have down here, which I'll just run through the order, you can kind of slow it down and take a look if it's helpful. You're going to see I put some of those things a little bit later, and then I run out of space, unfortunately, uh, from that perspective. But you're going to want to come back and get these by the end of your kind of tier 2 unlock to make sure you're upgrading all your weapons. Let's get into tier 2. As I mentioned, you're going to max out your supply first, which I highly recommend. From there, you're going to want to pick up a few things. I personally tend to prioritize um, things that are going to augment my missile damage. Um, so for example here, we have the kinetic focusing to get that plus 20%, go from plus 10 to plus 20% on the missiles. This will be important if you're spamming your Tempest on uh, uh, fleets, so make sure you build it. From there, I would also augment max hull points, so refined frameworks and armored frameworks. Our ships tend to be more glass cannony compared to, say, like TEC, for example, that tend to be a little more tanky from that perspective. Um, from there, I would 
focus on factories repair. I try to keep my ships alive, so I'm keeping my economy humming and working, um, so keep that in mind. And then you're going to want to unlock your Transensia unlock. This basically allows you to build your star base. It's a Transensia star base. Great defensive structure that's going to allow you to basically better defend your territories. Depending on the map, I'll have these at any planet I think that is vulnerable to attack, augmented with a ton of different hangars, and maybe some other point defense, star cannon beams, and other items like that. Um, and then make sure that you also pick up um, uh, anima redirection. So just as and like you know, in my build to make this more clear, uh, when I hit tier two, I'll get supply. I'll then get the weapons damage, the anime redirection. Uh, so uh, uh, has retargetable missiles, uh, which I think is hugely important. And then I'll kind of focus on making my ships more tanky. Coming back up here, you're going to want to unlock all your ships that should have been selected. So Guardian unlock, um, Purge unlock, uh, Area unlock. When I think about order, I personally probably uh, prioritize the Area just to get those drones out there and, and humming. Um, you are going to want to get different upgrades for our ships. This is kind of your playstyle. Um, uh, Psychonetic plating, just get that armor straight strength up uh, to make our capital ships more tanky will be important secondary seal generators is hyper critical shield burst restore enabled so you can quickly restore shields making yourself more survivable potent shield generation um, max shield points we're going to want to get i'd prioritize this also in that tanky build here it just happens to be up here laser weapon damage and then uh, max antimatter so in my builds and then beam weapon damage so in my builds i'm really focusing on maximizing those missiles then i'm going to make my ships more tanky unlock new ships and then circle back for beam and laser weapon augment upgrades from there so that is my suggestions for tier one and tier two for the advent let me know what you think in the comments what am i missing what did you like and if you did find this video helpful please drop a thumbs up thanks so much for watching and hope to see you in future videos Shadow Coast out.